Princess Peach has often been stuck with the damsel in distress trope. She did get to break away from that in 2005 through Super Princess Peach on the DS, but on consoles she's never gotten to lead her own adventure, that is until this year. Take your seats because the curtains are about to open for Princess Peach Showtime for the Nintendo Switch. In a game that doesn't even mention the Mario Brothers, Peach attends a play at the Sparkle Theater. But before the show can begin, a new villain with magical powers named Grape, yes, that's apparently her name, invades the theater with her minions and takes it over using evil magic. To save the theater, its guardian Stella gives Peach the powers of Sparkle and asks her to defeat the wicked sorceress and her minions using the powers of the currently imprisoned Sparklas. I know I said Sparkle a lot in the past minute, but the point is it's a story that works great for this game on multiple levels in a similar way that Luigi's Mansion works. For a game with a different lead protagonist, it tells an original story in a new setting with a new cast of side characters. Plus it's got that charm everyone expects for family-friendly Mushroom Kingdom games, and Peach agreeing to step up to be the theater's savior shows that she has her own heroic instincts that now get a chance to shine in the spotlight. Pun definitely intended. Visually, this game is very impressive. Much like Kirby 64 The Crystal Shards, this game is played in a 2.5D format. Peach runs through levels with each section being its own Broadway stage. It's technically a side-scroller, but the characters are in 3D and Peach can move in all three dimensions. The colors are so vibrant in this game for a great looking cartoon world slash theater aesthetic, and that's all helped with the well-polished HD graphics and particle effects. No, it's not as well-polished as other first-party big-budget Nintendo games, but it's still very visually appealing. And thanks to a consistently smooth frame rate, the animations are very fluid and lively. Like most Mushroom Kingdom games, voice acting is limited to grunts, screams, and a few audible words here and there. The bulk of the sound is in the music and sound effects, both of which are made to give the game a great sense of whimsical fun and excitement. They work hand in hand with the artwork to bring each different themed world to life. That's a big part of this game, the different themes. Throughout this game you'll play as Peach using different powers, with each level being built around each power. The two cowgirl levels are in western plays, the mermaid levels are underwater, and the detective levels are in early 20th century England like a Sherlock Holmes story. Each of the five floors in the game has four levels representing four different powers. Within this setup is a great mix that provides gameplay styles for everyone. For puzzle solving powers, there's detective, chef, and mermaid. For action and combat fans, there's sword fighter, kung fu master, and mighty peach, which is a power that makes peach a space age warrior fighting aliens. There's even some stealth gameplay as a ninja and dashing thief. And then you can take a break from the stealth and butt kicking with a little Princess Peach on Ice show. Let's kick some ice. With how relatively easy most of the combat is and the slower pace of the more puzzle focused powers, this game could have easily been something boring. If it was just one of these powers the whole time, I feel like it would have gotten dull after a while. But the variety in powers and challenges that went with them actually kept me playing. The different powers gave the game great variety and prevented monotony from setting in. The detective power has you interview witnesses and suspects while examining clues and make a aha when you spot something important to the case. The ninja lets you sneak underwater and breathe through a bamboo piece. Kung Fu Peach has you pull off badass spin kicks like this and fight enemies in an almost quick time type of event. The mermaid has you control fish to fulfill tasks by singing which is honestly probably the least exciting power. But then as a sword fighter, you can dodge enemy attacks in slow motion like Bayonetta before slicing them up, and as Mighty Peach, you can actually throw UFOs into other UFOs. Mighty Peach is probably my favorite power. This is going to be one of those games where everyone who plays is going to have their favorite powers. Again, kind of like a Kirby game. Except Kirby always changes powers on a whim in the middle of a level. But with all these different powers, I have to wonder how the next inevitable Super Smash Bros. game will integrate these. Is it going to change your moveset? Perhaps that's a discussion for another day. The fun boss battles have very interesting designs that were clearly inspired by the whole theater theme. They're more challenging than you might expect, but not that challenging. Experienced gamers will find the first couple of bosses pretty easy to beat. To be appropriate for its target age group though, the bosses are just right for younger gamers. Aside from playing from start to finish, you also have to find spark gems that give Stella the power to open each boss door. They're like crystal shards in that a lot of them are hidden, or you have to fulfill a task to earn them, which is sometimes harder than you'd expect. You see, the base game isn't too hard. It feels like it purposely has a lower difficulty to be a family game without being too easy. For one thing, you only have to press a few buttons throughout the whole game regardless of power, just A and B, plus CR to open hidden elevators. 
so it's more that the game is accessible, which is always a positive thing. The hardest part of Showtime is getting all the sparkle gems. When you're aiming for all those gems to reach 100% completion, that's when the game actually becomes hard. Luckily, if you miss a gem the first time, you can replay any unlocked level as many times as you want to find the missing gems, or just go for a higher score of coins. The problem is, each level is about 8 to 10 minutes long, and if you miss a gem again, you have to start that level again from the beginning in order to try that short segment again and get the gem you missed. There's only a checkpoint system if you die, which works with you losing 10 coins and starting over in the segment where you died. It gets tiresome after a while of playing through the same parts and seeing all those cutscenes repeatedly just so you can try to snag that elusive gem. The coins, by the way, can be used to buy bonus outfits for Peach and Stella based on the various powers. They don't have any effect on the gameplay and are purely for aesthetics, but who doesn't love low-cost bonus costumes? I don't think it's hyperbole to say that this game is to Peach what Luigi's Mansion is to Luigi. It's a great game that feels specially made for Peach and it has the potential to get sequels on future Nintendo consoles. Who knows, maybe a sequel on the Switch's successor will have a multiplayer mode. With its 8 hour average runtime, I do feel like it should be $40 or $50 instead of $60, but it's still a game worth playing. I do recommend that parents buy this game for their kids and older Mario fans at least rent this game from Gamefly. Well that's my review of Princess Peach Showtime for the Nintendo Switch. To help me produce more videos like this, please support my Patreon page. Special thanks to my current patrons here. Remember that supporting my Patreon gives you the name of the credits and access to my main videos a day early. Also be sure to watch my previous reviews of Super Mario Bros. Wonder for the Switch and Kirby 64 The Crystal Shards for the Nintendo 64. See you all next time! <laughs>